Next up, we have Michael Gutman, uh, Michael Gutkin, representing the biology department. Mike Gutkin. I'm uh, with the biology department, senior major. Uh, the title of my thesis was Cellular Events in Zebrafish Optic Tectal Brain Explants, a Model to Analyze Neurotrauma and Neuroregeneration. Um, I don't, the laser pointer is not working on this thing, so I'm going to try my best to uh, kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, research focuses in my laboratory under uh, Dr. Zoltan Fulop uh, was to study cellular events taking place in nervous tissue. Um, in, in specifically uh, cases of traumatic brain injury. Uh, traumatic brain injury is any blunt force trauma or any physical damage that occurs uh, to the brain itself. <clears throat> uh, it also to use a model animal whose brain has known regenerative capacities so we can study those in different, using different techniques. Um, we also wanted to use a model that's uh, inexpensive and easy to handle being that we are a small liberal arts college. Um, that model is zebrafish, Donnie Orario. Um, on top, you can see a female zebrafish with an enlarged stomach, and on the bottom, you can see a male zebrafish. These zebrafish are about uh, the size of a matchstick, if you, uh, if you can imagine that. So they're pretty tiny um, <clears throat> that we're dealing with. The zebrafish brain uh, is, is where we focus most of our studies. Um, here you see a, a diagram on, on your uh, left, um, picture A. Uh, is a dorsal view of the brain, picture B is a ventral view, and picture C is a side view of the brain. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. The zebrafish brain is about the size of a small um, white rice grain. So when dealing with it, we're using a stereo microscope to uh, look at it and also microsurgical tools to um, uh, slice it up in, in this case. Um, what you see here in pink uh, as artificial colored is the optic tectum, uh, and uh, that was um, where, we're, where we're studying most of our, uh, most of the cha morphological changes occurring. Um, on, on, I guess on top of the, in picture A, is uh, on top of the pink bulbs, which is the optic tectum, is the forebrain, and on bottom uh, in yellow is the cerebellum, followed by the uh, medulla and the brainstem underneath that. Uh, to your right, is a histological section of the zebrafish brain. Um, and so I, I can't really uh, point, the laser point is not working, but these two bulbs, you can imagine if you're comparing it to picture A, um, is the optic tectum on both sides, and uh, which contains uh, the periventricular gray zone, which is that highly organized structure you see, a uh, very definitive structure, and which is our main, uh, main focus of study because um, when in, uh, in cases of traumatic brain injury, we can examine uh, if, if this brain is uh, regenerating, if this structure is uh, degenerating and possibly reorganizing um, in my studies. So what I did was I did an uh, organotypic culture. It's an in vitro experiment um, in which the brain is excised out of the fish while it's anesthetized. So the brain is taken out and it is placed into... Um, and an artificial environment containing nutrients that are um, that supply uh, that supply to the brain uh, certain things it needs to uh, survive. Basically, um, you see on the right are the plates in which the brains were uh, placed in to uh, survive in, in vitro. Uh, parts three, four, five, and six are the optic tectum, and the and I would slice the optic tectum up in four pieces in order to. Um, in order to have di uh, different samples to examine. Um, here is a light microscopic uh, micrograph of, um, of the actual uh, surviving organotypic culture at 96 hours of cultivation. This was done by Professor Christopher Corvo of the biology department a couple years ago. Um, on the periphery, I'd just like to note, you can kind of see this spongy kind of um, areas. This is spongiform degeneration that um, after a traumatic brain injury, by simply taking the brain out of the fish, it's experiencing a, a traumatic, uh, traumatic injury. 
So this is spongiform degeneration. However, at 96 hours of cultivation, um, uh, Professor Corbo found a, uh, what he named an embryoid body or an embryoid structure. And this is a structure that resembles um, a, forma a forming, uh, forming structure in a developing brain of, um, of an embryonic uh, organism. Um, my personal research goals were to uh, take that experiment uh, and take the, take the past um, findings and I, was, uh, I wanted to use the electro, uh, scanning electron microscope to examine the surface structure of these tissues and I also wanted to use a confocal laser scanning microscope to uh, detect any cell proliferation or cell division uh, that's possibly taking place in the surviving tissue. Here you see scanning electron micrographs. The top row is 12 hours of cultivation and the bottom row is 24 hours of cultivation. Um, the orange box, if you can see it, is uh, in G4 is a mast cell that's uh, at 24 hours aiding in the immune response of uh, this dying tissue around it. Uh, in G G5, you see uh, possible neovascularization, which is a possible formation of new blood vessels. Um, in G6, you see a typical representation of spongiform degeneration. At 48 hours, we see the migrate, uh, in H6, you see the migration of cells to the periphery to absorb, uh, to optimize their absorption of nutrients. At 96 hours, um, you see spongiform degeneration in many of the pictures. However, in I3 and I6, you see uh, very healthy, generally looking cells. Um, for the second part of my research, I use a confocal microscope. Here you see, um, here you see pictures of normal, brain, normal zebrafish brain. So here you see that structure, the periventricular gray zone, very organized. In blue, you see cell nuclei, and in red, you see tubulin. So these are the processes of the cell. Uh, going towards the peel surface of the brain in that first picture. Um, <clears throat> so here I did a BRDU assay. It's a molecule that detects uh, cell proliferation. So I wanted to see if there was any proliferation within the time points. At six hours, you can see there's healthy cells. However, only one possible detection of a proliferating cell. At 48 hours, you see, again, only maybe two possible uh, detections of proliferating cells signified by that red fluorescence. At 96 hours, we again see healthy, normal-looking uh, cell nuclei, and again, we also see um, minor detections of cell proliferation occurring. Um, in order to know that my assay was working, I did a positive control on CHO cells. These are cells that are known to actively be dividing. And so you see in this uh, picture on your bottom right uh, is a co-localization of both uh, a blue stain to stain the cell nuclei and the red stain to uh, signify a cell that's in proliferation or a mitotic phase. Um, in conclusion, we found that uh, adult <coughs> fish brain do demonstrate regenerative capacities in this surviving organotypic culture. Um, through the use of the scanning electron microscope, um, we characterize regeneration uh, by the relocation of stem-like cells, uh, also accompanied by neovascularization and um, within this uh, spongiform degenerative area. Um, we found vital cells can be detected through confocal microscope using immunohistochemistry techniques uh, as well as cell proliferation. However, we didn't detect uh, as many dividing cells as we expected. I'd like to thank Professor Corbo for his uh, supervision. Uh, Dr. Alejandro Alonzo, Dr. William Lamro at the College of Staten Island for the use of the confocal microscope, uh, Dr. Zoltan Fullett, my research mentor, and Dr. Uh, Professor Linda Rapp for my uh, support. That's all. <laughs> Questions? Yes? Michael, why did you choose this topic? To um, simply, uh, when I started research two years ago, um, Dr. Fulop and Professor Chris Corvo have been working on, uh, on, this, act on this particular um, research for years now. Um, they did previous studies using a regular light microscope and a transmission electron microscope, examining the exact same stuff I did. So um, when I started research under uh, Dr. Fulop as my mentor, I kind of um, went into it to complete this uh, using two different microscopes and kind of get a whole um, nice story um, we're hopefully looking to publish in, in the near future. Are you going to plan to...? Yes, I, I'm, I'm attending here at Wagner College for my microbiology degree.
So I plan to continue. Thank you.